Good morning, folks. Well, it's warm. Good, isn't it? <laughs> Unless you're too warm. Right then. Welcome, everybody. That is tea, coffee, and definitely shortbread <laughs> after the service. In fact, you can take a packet with you. Um, so please do that if you like shortbread. Take a packet with you. Now then, where was I? Um, hey, shortbread. <laughs> I ate too much, you see, when I was young. So I'm not very tall. I should have eaten. I should have eaten that French bread, which is long. <laughs> All right. Right then, our union goes ahead with a harbour on the 9th of August. So we're having a Kirk session meeting. That includes everybody uh, here on the 10th of August. So we can sort some things out. So please pass that information on to any, any other elders that you know. Uh, right then, where was I? Oh yes, I'll be on Maggie will be here for the next two Sundays uh, after this. I, I couldn't get holidays I wanted uh, together. But Maggie's going to do the next two Sundays because we've got the, uh, my son and his family, the grandchildren are coming. So we're going to have some time with them. And I also need two weeks because I have to get my hair cut in stages, I was told. So, um, but please come along and support Maggie. Uh, it does your heart good. When I see you people here today, I can't tell you how much it has an effect on me. So please come and support Maggie. Now then, two unbelievable things. The first one is the funeral directors have put the prices up for funerals and they blame it on the cost of living. <laughs> How'd you work that out? Um, and the other <laughs> unbelievable thing was I was just about to put my shoes on today when I found inside my shoe a dead frog. Work that one out. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if it's something to do with my feet when it got in there, but it <laughs> obviously didn't last very long. And, um, so that was a bit of a shock to the system uh, something I never expected so there you go right then everybody okay let's worship God then with our first hymn praise my soul the king of heaven you can either listen or you can join in of course oh that's the other thing I'm trying to get um, an organist for next Sunday um, I haven't quite made it yet, but we're trying to do that. So if you could come along and you can have a sing as well. But you can sing today.
tonight, I think we'll just light a candle for those we love. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Let's pray together. Almighty God, loving Father, we thank you that you are not distant and unknowable, but closer than our hands and feet, closer than our very breath. And we thank you that we can know you through creation, through Jesus our Lord, through the Holy Spirit within, and through your written word to us. We praise you, King of heaven, to your feet, we bring our tribute. May we be ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. May your angels help us to adore you. So, Father, accept our praises today, imperfect as they may be, but made perfect through our Lord and Saviour. Lord, come to each one of us this day. Fill us with your peace and joy. Bind us together in love. We ask that you would take away any disturbing thoughts of our past, any anxious thoughts for the future. May we glimpse the eternal reality of the realm of your spirit. Forgive us, Lord, for not seeking you with all our hearts, for relying on ourselves instead of trusting in you. Forgive our lack of faith and hardness of heart. So, Lord, in the silence, we confess those things to you which are not of love's kind. Lord, in your tender mercy, you have heard our prayers and forgiven our sins through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, our Lord. Father, may we leave here today knowing we have met with you. May we leave here wanting to know you more. Give us that burning desire to ask, to seek, and to knock. And may the door be opened into your realm of all love and truth and beauty. Oh, Father, these things we pray. And then through Christ our Lord, and we further pray together the prayer he taught us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now then. We come to our reading. We're still in Luke's Gospel. And the last three weeks, which started with Maggie, uh, we got these three readings and they all went in order of the gospel. And the first one was the two commandments, or if you like, the one commandment in two parts. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbours yourself. And then there was that um, a parable of the Good Samaritan. That's what you did with Maggie. And then the next week it was the story of Martha uh, and Mary. As Mary sat at Jesus' feet listening to all he said, and Martha complained to Jesus that Mary wasn't helping her in the kitchen to prepare, uh, to help her with her work. Uh, and then we have this teaching today that we'll uh, read where Jesus, it says, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, the disciples asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. Now, Luke didn't know when these things happened, but he's put them in this order, I think, because they fit together. So let's hear then today's reading. It says, One day Jesus was praying in a certain place 
when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, when you pray, say this, Father, may your holy name be honored. May your kingdom come. Give us day by day the food we need. Forgive us our sins, for we forgive everyone who does, wrong, who does us wrong. And do not bring us to hard testing. This is Luke's version of the Lord's Prayer, by the way. And Matthew, we do the Matthew version that we find in Matthew. Then he goes on to say, And Jesus said to his disciples, Suppose one of you should go to a friend's house at midnight and say, Friend, let me borrow three loaves of bread. A friend of mine who was on a trip has just come to my house. I don't have any food for him. And suppose your friend should answer from inside, Don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. Well, what then? I tell you that even if he will not get up and give you the bread because you are his friend, yet he will get up and give you everything you need because you are not ashamed to keep on asking. And so I say to you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For those who ask will receive. Those who seek will find and the door will be opened to anyone who knocks. Would any of you who are fathers give your son a snake when he asks for fish? Or would you give him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? As bad as you are, you know how to give good things to your children. How much more then will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Amen, and thanks be to God this day for the reading of his word. So today's theme then is prayer, and um, whenever we come to God in prayer, we can only come just as we are. So our next reading, uh, sorry, our next hymn is Just As I Am. Grace, my. 
Sam. Well, with this heat of these videos we get from India, we can relate a bit now, can't we? We'll be getting fans soon. Right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today's passage begins. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. And after he finished, a disciple asked, Lord, teach us to pray. Then Jesus says, when you pray, pray this. Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. And as I said, this is a shortened version of uh, Matthew's. Uh, Lord's Prayer in his gospel. Although some think this may be closer to the original, but we don't know. Anyway, this teaching on prayer hangs on the word Father, or Abba, as Jesus said, Abba being the Aramaic word for Father. So the prayer begins with intimacy, Abba, Father. Now I'm well aware that for many people the concept of of God as Father can be a difficult one. Either because, um, like my dear wife, who lost her father uh, when she was seven years old, that can be difficult. Or you may have had uh, a difficult father, like singer-songwriter Mark Everett. His father was a, a physicist, he was a genius, but Mark says that his father never touched him, not even a handshake, never mind a hug. In fact, the only time he can remember touching him is when he's, he found that his father had died and he tried to pick him up. But he said the most damaging thing of all was that his father hardly ever spoke a word to him. Now he came to peace with this years later because obviously, although his father was a genius, there was something not quite right in another department, so he couldn't relate very well to other people. And, he, and Mark Everett did come to terms with that. And a very touching um, documentary, if you ever get a chance to see it, called Parallel Worlds. Um, it's a, quite a touching documentary, well worth seeing. But when we hear of some of the things children have gone through at the hands of their parents, the ones that make the headline news, it is shocking to us. It's shocking because it goes against everything we believe the love of a parent should be. So yes, the image of God as father can be a difficult one. The image of God as mother can be equally difficult for the same or similar reasons. So if our relationship with father or mother uh, was damaging, how can we have a positive image of God as father or mother? Whatever we do, it's not going to be easy to change our perception. I suppose the first thing to remember is that the love of a parent is meant to be the best sort of love there is. Even if our own experience uh, has been the opposite of that, we instinctively know it's meant to be the most loving of loves, if you like. If there has been someone else who has been a positive influence, such as a grandmother or a grandfather, or, or even a teacher or whoever, someone who's had a good influence on us, then maybe we could try and use that image uh, when we come to God in prayer. Or, as this is about prayer, 
we can always pray something like, Father, my experience of a father's love has not been what it should be. Heal my hurt, heal my mind. Help me to see what it really means to know a father's love. Then we can read parables like the prodigal son, which is sometimes better known as the extravagant love of the father. And that's how Jesus sees the father's love in the parable of the prodigal son. Oh, where Philip asked Jesus, show us the father. And Jesus replied, don't you know me, Philip? When you have seen me, you have seen the father also. So if the image of father or mother is difficult, then we can approach God through the image of Christ. After the Lord's Prayer, which is a pattern to pray, there is the analogy of persisting in prayer, the parable to persist in prayer. Someone knocks on a friend's door asking for bread to feed a visitor, but the whole family are in bed and the friend says, don't bother me, but you keep knocking until he gives you what you ask for. Of course, when I was reading this story, came to my mind, and um, I, I think I, I might have told it before, I'm pretty sure I have, but anyway. When our children were young, our middle son, Alex, collected football stickers. And one weekend he said to me, are you going out today, Dad? I said, I think so. He said, will you get me some football stickers? And I replied, yes, if I go out, I will get you some football stickers. So a few minutes later, he said to me, um, will you get me some football stickers, Dad? I said, yes, if I go out, I will get you some football stickers. And then again, and then again, and then again. And after the tenth time, I said, right, that's it. Now shut up about football stickers. If I go out, I will get you some. You don't have to ask again. Well, about ten minutes later... He said, Dad? I said, yes. He said, knock, knock. I said, who's there? He said, football. I said, football who? He said, football stickers. <laughs> so I imagine he'd been lying there thinking, how can I remind him without asking, actually asking him? Anyway, of course, he got his football stickers. But uh, it's no wonder that incident came to mind because the example of persistence is knocking on your neighbor's door. And then Jesus goes on to say, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. Or as in the case of my son, knock, knock and the door will be opened to you. Well, this example of, uh, with my son takes us back to the beginning then of the Lord's Prayer. Father, hallowed be your name. Or as William Barclay translates it, O oh, Father, let your name be held in reverence. And reverence has been defined as feeling or attitude of deep respect, love and awe, as for something sacred. There was enough love, of course, between my son uh, and myself for him to ask me for something, but enough awe and respect for him to stop asking me when I asked him to, but enough love then for him to find another way without disobeying me. Now, last week, we looked at the story of Mary and Martha and how Martha brought her complaints to Jesus uh, of how she was left to do the work on her own as a, a sister sat at the feet of Jesus. She sat there in adoration as Mary was busy in the kitchen. So Mar Martha came to Jesus with her complaints, even asking Jesus if he cared about her situation. Now, both of these approaches to God in prayer are valid. And maybe that's why Luke put this story uh, of Martha before today's story on prayer. Like the Psalms, which are not only filled with reverence and adoration of God, but with much complaining, and not only to him, but about him as well. Like Martha, Lord, don't you care? So prayer is a tricky thing. On the one hand, we might think we can only pray when we are desperate 
Or we can only pray when we feel we have the right attitude or when we feel we're good enough to pray. But as the hymn says, we come to God in prayer just as we are, just as I am. If we feel desperate, we pray. If we feel okay, we can pray. If our image of God is not quite right, we can pray. The disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, and so he gave them that pattern of prayer with the Lord's Prayer and with examples of persistence in asking, seeking, knocking. So the mechanics of prayer are not difficult. It's just praying, that's the difficulty. It's difficult because like Martha in the story, we are often worried and distracted and or distracted by many things. It's difficult because sometimes in attempting to pray, we feel awkward and restless and distracted. But that's a good place to start. Abba, Father, I feel awkward and restless. I want to pray, but I'm finding it hard. Help me in my quest. The thing is, we can begin to pray like Martha, with restlessness, awkwardness, or complaints. But we can finish that prayer like Mary, as we sit in adoration, and we don't want it to end because the Spirit of God has filled us with his love and his joy and his peace. So, prayer sometimes feels so awkward and unnatural, and at other times so relaxed and natural that we begin, Father, holy is your name. But we get no further because the meaning of that phrase becomes so real it fills our whole being. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. And so do we. Lord, teach us to pray. Amen. Our next hymn is called Sweet Hour of Prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known in seasons of distress. and sh- 
shout while passing through the air. Farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. And shout while passing through the air. Farewell, farewell, sweet hour. Thank you, Sam. That's why I find playing the piano difficult. I always try it on my own. So I think it's best if there's two of you. Okay. Let's join our hearts in prayer then. Let's pray. Abba, Father, all the good things we have have come from you. We acknowledge your goodness to us through our worship and doing good works for you and in our giving. Accept then our offerings given for your joy and given for the preaching of the gospel in this place and beyond. Abba, Father, where our image of you as father or mother has been damaged, help us to forgive our parents, heal those hurts, and help us to see you as Jesus saw you. And as parents ourselves, we pray for healing for any damage we have caused to our children that has distorted your image for them as a loving parent. So, Lord, forgive us, we pray. We thank you this day for the gift of prayer. Forgive us when we forget to pray for not bringing everything in prayer to you, whether for ourselves or others. And, Lord, when we, whenever we forget to pray, we ask that you would come and knock on the door of our hearts and remind us of who you are and whose we are. And Lord, our hearts are still weary with the things that happen in the world. Lord, it seems the war in, U the war in Ukraine is not going to end soon. Nevertheless, we pray that it will. We pray for the release of the grain exports from the Ukraine and that the grain from the coming harvest can be saved. Lord, so many suffer at the hands of the few. Will it ever end? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we remember those we know who need your loving touch, those who have lost their loved ones, and the lonely, and those who are unwell in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for those we know who have been ill for some time, and are feeling so low, we ask that you would lift them up in body, mind, and spirit. We ask that you would intervene. And now, Father, we take a moment to bring to you the concerns of our own hearts in the silence.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Abba, Father, when we feel awkward and restless and distracted in prayer, ready to give up, help us to persevere in asking, seeking, and knocking. For these things we pray in the name above all names. Christ Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Our final hymn is Before the Throne of God Above. May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit fill your hearts with his love, with his joy, and with his peace, this day and forevermore. And all the people said together, Amen. Well, thank you, folks, and um, I hope you have uh, a blessed week, and I shall see you in a couple of weeks' time. <laughs>